Welcome back to another Recall by Data IQ video. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tina and I'm a data scientist that works in one of the previously known as Fang companies, but I guess now it's Manga? Mango companies? I don't know, one of those big tech companies, you know what I mean. In this video, I'm going to share with you guys the resume that got me an entry-level data science position and my exact thought process when creating it. Do not be fooled, that's only one page long. Hours and hours went into this resume. Also, stay until the end of this video because I'm going to share tips on what projects you should do if you don't have any actual job experience. I think these projects are what helped me differentiate myself from the sea of resumes and got me an internship at Goldman Sachs and an offer from Amazon a year prior to applying and landing my current full-time data science position. Okay, so here it is. Let's start first with structure. As you can see, this resume is very simple and ATS friendly, which stands for Applicant Tracking System. It's how companies parse your resume automatically as part of their initial screen. You want your resume to be easily parsable so you can maximize your chances of getting it through this first screen. I'll link a free resource where you can check out to see if your resume is ATS friendly for yourself. I also chose this format because it's relatively not offensive, I would say, to everyone, and you can cram in a bunch of stuff to show diversity of skill. Note that it is one page long. Do not, I repeat, do not have more than one page unless you have more than 10 years of experience. Okay, now head. Super simple, name, email, phone number, and address. The address is not really for mailing, but more for the recruiter to know where you're based. I don't put my GitHub, LinkedIn, portfolio, or any socials because I noticed that most applications have you input the links directly on their website anyway. Next up is education and honors. I actually have a non-traditional background kind of. Um, I did my undergraduate at the University of Toronto in pharmacology. Um, so yeah, I was pre-med until I realized way too late that I didn't actually want to be a doctor. So I moved to the States and did a master's in computer science at the University of Pennsylvania. So in this section, you want to list items in descending order with the most recent education first. You want to put the date so that the recruiter knows when you graduated or will graduate. I also put my GPA, which I recommend putting if yours is higher than a 3.5. The relevant courses section shows that I know the basics of the job. Pro tip here is if your program has a convoluted name like mine, which is Masters in Computer and Information Technology, I would say put what it is closest to and then put like an abbreviated form next to it. I started doing this personally because recruiters have asked me like what Masters in Computer and Information Technology meant. So I do this now uh, to minimize confusion. Same thing with University of Toronto, same structure. Um, I also just put in some honors I received when I was there to show that I'm a good student. Probably. Okay, next we're going to get into the meat of the resume, which is professional experiences. This is where I spent the most time and really embrace this principle of show, not tell. I find that way too many people just try to cram in a bunch of keywords or actually even worse. They just claim to have a bunch of skills in the skill section, but not even feature them in the professional experiences section. What you want to do here is tell a story and weave in these skills and accomplishments throughout that story. I'll show you guys what I mean by that. So first item here is Goldman Sachs. I do want to mention, first off, that I did something here that I don't recommend people do now in retrospect. My title for this position was actually Technology Summer Analyst, but I tried to make it more, I guess, like data science-y because what I actually did at that internship was data science, although I came in as a software engineer intern. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing this because it's a bit deceptive now that I think about it. And the recruiter is clearly not dumb and should be able to tell what I actually worked on just by reading the bullet points below. So here's a quick rundown of that internship. So in this internship, I worked on data science and machine learning. The high level overview was that banks needed to maintain a certain level of liquidity or cash on hand per regulations. The task that I was given was to do anomaly detection so we can be alerted or even better preemptively know uh, when we might not have enough liquidity or too much liquidity. So this way we can make preparations ahead of time to keep the liquidity more stable. I like to structure each item in the professional experience section in a specific way. The first bullet point is the high level overview of what I did. And the second bullet point is the technical stuff. And the final bullet point is the impact. What I did here was use unsupervised machine learning algorithms on the time series data on a lot of unstructured data, which then ultimately reduced the processing time. The technical stuff is that I first had to get the data using Scala and wrangle it, etc. And the final bullet point is extremely important. And I often see people not including this, which is a really big shame. 
Um, in the real world, what ultimately matters is the so what factor. The thing is like you did all these things with the fancy stuff, but how did that actually impact the company in a good way, preferably? But how did you contribute value? This is so crucial because at the end of the day, what the company cares about is how you contributed towards their top line, bottom line operations or something to make things better. So this is why the third bullet point is so important. Here I wrote that what I did was impactful enough that the team's global head requested an executive summary and presentation detailing the value proposition and how to move forward to fully incorporate this algorithm into the team's operation. So to summarize, the structure I use is overview, technical stuff, and impact. But to elevate my work even more and show the impact that I had, I also stuck in quantifications wherever I could. For example, reduce process time by 20%, 500 plus end clients, etc. I also very intentionally weaved in these keywords like unsupervised machine learning algorithms, Hadoop, anomaly detection, wrangled. So ATS is happy with the keywords and the recruiter is more convinced that I actually know these skills and have and have applied them in the real world, not just in school. Also, the amount of data here casually hints that I was indeed working with big data, which is, you know, all the rage these days. As you can see, there's only three bullet points here, but there's actually a lot that went into it. This internship was the star of my resume and I milked it as much as I could. The other work experience I have here is a research position at the Ontario Institute for cancer research. This was in bioinformatics and was my first job out of my undergraduate. I didn't go into as much detail here compared to the Goldman Sachs internship and simply put the first line as the high-level overview and combined that with the technical stuff of Python, R, and Linux. The impact here was the two publications, which is how accomplishments are measured in academia. How many publications and what journals you got published in. Here's also important to note that I actually had a bunch of other research positions prior to this, but I didn't just stick everything in here. I chose the one that is most relevant to data science, the position I was applying for and had the most impact, which is the publications. When I applied for the internship at Goldman Sachs, this experience was featured way more and I had a lot more details, but here the Goldman Sachs internship was way more relevant. This is still nice though that I had long-term job experience and worked in both bioinformatics and finance, which shows the soft skill of adaptability, a very important data science skill. Moving on to skills. I like to think about this section as a summary of all the skills I've already sprinkled throughout the resume and adding on a few other ones that were not explicitly featured. I organized the section by programming language, big data and machine learning, and data science and miscellaneous technologies. The last one I threw in mostly, I guess I would call like data science concepts, things you do, um, as opposed to tools. These skills are actually super important and I use them pretty much daily. For programming languages, I put what I was best at and the most relevant to data science as the highest on the list. You may notice that there is no SQL and that is because I didn't actually know SQL at that time. However, this is actually a really, really absolutely crucial skill. So I do recommend that you go learn this because they will probably ask you SQL questions in the interview. So don't be like me. <laughs> Big thing to know about the skill section is that this should be used as a summary and a way to kind of like round out your skill set, not where the crucial skills only show up one time. The important stuff should be already shown in the professional experiences or projects and leadership section, which I will be going over next. Okay, we're almost there. Final section is projects and leadership. This is where I put in all the other impactful projects I've done and to differentiate myself from a lot of the other technical applicants by basically showing that I have people skills and I don't just sit in the corner and code by myself all day. First I know is teaching assistant. I was a teaching assistant in math class and kind of just did like normal teaching assistant things. Um, main thing I was trying to emphasize here is that since I had to work with other people, I am somewhat sociable. Co-founder and business lead for Tally. So this was my fail startup. I basically show that it failed, but it wasn't a complete failure, uh, seeing as we managed to raise a tiny bit of money. And since I was the business lead and worked in the team, I must have some interpersonal and leadership skills. The next two are both university clubs where I held some sort of executive positions. These are again, not super relevant to the data science position I was applying for, but the reason why I chose to put these on my resume instead of personal projects um, is because I already demonstrated my technical skills through my work experience. So I instead chose to keep on kind of like hammering in that I am relatively social and have leadership skills. So before I had the Goldman Sachs internship experience, I spent a lot more surface area on these projects. Honestly, what recruiters ideally want to see is relevant work experience. But if you don't have that, the next best thing is real world projects that kind of like mimic work experience. The projects that I have here all have real world impact. 
or in the case of Tally, attempted to have real world impact. Um, so I think this differentiated me from this sea of entry level resumes that all had no super relevant job experience, since what most people have on their resume is rather generic personal projects like predicting Titanic survival or like Twitter sentiment analysis and things like that. But I'm not bashing on personal projects, okay? These personal projects are absolutely crucial to learning and you can't really do these real life impactful projects very well if you don't learn the skills first. So if you're looking to uplevel your data science machine learning skill set, you should check out Dataiku that has really great explanations for machine learning concepts and full data science and machine learning projects that are actually unique that you can use as a guide for your own personal projects link in descriptions. Now, finally, as promised, what to do if you don't have any or much relevant work experience. My recommendation here is to go and learn these skills enough and do personal projects using resources like Dataiku. Then start taking on projects that are similar to work experience in the sense that they have real world impact, but with a lower bar of entry. My recommendations are research positions like I did, uh, pro bono consulting and open source projects. These show that you understand how to work in the real world, how to work in a team and how to deliver real life impact. Plus, since these are real world projects, they're bound to be unique and much more likely to stick in the recruiter's mind. Remember, recruiters go through hundreds, if not thousands of resumes. So your goal is to make your resume stand out. This is the resume that got me my data science position at, I'm just going to say one of the big tech companies because I don't know what the acronyms these days, like Fang, Mango, Manga. Yeah, but basically, uh, this is how, this is my resume. So I hope you found this video helpful and see you guys in the next video.